Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosell. This is my tech corner of YouTube. And today we're going to be keeping going with the backup and archiving theme because it's January and this is the time of the year when a lot of people do their archiving for their last year's data. That's what I'm currently doing. And I want to talk today about Google Takeout and offer a few thoughts on sort of how you can use it and pitfalls, potential pitfalls from uh, for using it from for as a kind of backup tool the first thing to say about google takeout is that it's not a backup tool the way i think about it as i said in my last video is a data liberation tool it's basically taking what you have in google across your google services and saying here's an export um here you go and uh, you can use that as now people would call it colloquially a backup and there's a difference between the sort of colloquial use of backup and the technical use. The reason it's not technically a backup is because you can't use it to restore. You can't, if you made, you deleted some files in uh, Google My Maps, let's say you deleted a few maps, I'm choosing My Maps for a reason here, you can't automatically say, whoops, here's the backup, let's restore that service, right? That would be if it were usable as a backup. It's not. So I would I would say it's basically the the best definition for it is a snapshot. It's a snapshotting tool, right? It takes a picture of your data in Google at a specific point in time. Now that's not to say that you can manually you could try to manually use that to restore your data. So let's take Google Drive. If you accidentally deleted the files and you accidentally delete it from the recycle bin, I've seen this happen um, in uh, in my in my first one of my first jobs here. Uh, someone on our marketing team deleted the entire company Google Drive, and the CTO had taken a backup and he was able to restore it. So uh, you could manually say, "Okay, great, thank goodness I have a Google Takeout. Let me go into the Google Drive and I'll manually push the files back up to the server." but that is a manual uh, method. So Google Takeout, the other problem with it, as I said yesterday, is that it, if it were a backup tool, it would be called a full backup tool. It gives you all the data and that's not very efficient if you want to use it quite regularly because you'll be duplicating basically all the data, almost all the data every time you run it. So those are the limitations. And there's one more limitation that I pointed out yesterday, and that is the issue with brand accounts that uh, Google, the way they organize their um, hierarchy is you have a Google user, which can be either a Google Workspace account, that's the paid Google plan, or a regular free Google account, and you can create brand accounts. So if you want to have a YouTube channel, um, you, need to, you open a brand account, and if you want to create a new YouTube channel, you open a new brand account. Those brand accounts are fit under the hierarchy of your Google account. So if you're doing a Google takeout and you want to include all your YouTube channel's videos, the only way to do that, if I'm not mistaken, um, and I'm pretty sure that I'm not because I have I learned this the hard way when I did my first takeout, I went into my YouTube data and I was like, where are all my videos for my YouTube channel? And that wasn't included because those were under a brand account. So that's a big, big, big limitation to know about that the there isn't a feature whereby Google say, well, do you want to do a takeout? Yes. And uh, which brand accounts do you want? Do you want all of them? Do you want any of them? Uh, you have to do it manually. So let me just go into Google takeout and just to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about more specifically here. So this is my Google takeout that I'm preparing. And by default, it's going to batch up the data for my user account. To take a backup of your brand accounts, you need to click on the top right hand uh, side of the screen and click on your name. In my case, it's D for Daniel. And once you do that, you if you have brand accounts, you'll be able to see them. So then we have the Google Takeout itself. And I wanted to make a few notes about the products. So the easiest thing to do is to just take everything, but that might not be the best approach, which is why I want to show you guys um, what you might want and, and what and what you might not want. So by default, you're going to get like pretty much everything, but you can deselect all or you can select all. So deselecting all would obviously be nothing. And you would just specify these are the things I want. Or you can start by selecting everything and then you can go through these are the things I don't want. Now, the point I want to make is that for Google Takeout, what you're going to find is that the vast majority of your data lives in only a few Google products, right? 
act and the rest of it like from a backer perspective do i need my access log activity this is my google workspace where like i'm basically the only user i don't need to back that up i don't use art and culture i don't use assignment i don't use google blogger now here's something i do use calendar right so what you can do for some services so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to do a more strategic google takeout i'm going to say deselect all start with nothing and then i'm going to say okay yes uh i will i would like to back up or take a snapshot of my calendar data so basically for certain products you can go in and select a specific data that you want to back up and the calendar is an example you might have a bunch of different calendars on your google account and you might only want some of them and you're able to do that in the selection options here so by undocking the calendar options thing i'm able to select these are some of the uh, google calendars that i've uh, created in my google account some of these are really really old i don't think i've used them in years so you can go you can be more selective and say okay i don't need this calendar and the format is ics but i need the other calendars so that's the first thing i would say uh, within the calendar product that you might want to do is specify which calendars you want to export uh, because i think from a snapshot perspective the least um the least junk data you have the easier it's going to be to actually hone in if you ever actually need to use your snapshot for the purpose of restoring or something it's going to make the restore process easier if you just have the data that you actually required Another one that I would strongly rec I think most people would want is Google Contacts. So if you use Google Contact, um, Google Contacts to save your contacts, then that is its own thing. And you can click on the vCard format here. So this is an example of a, Google, of a product where you have some options. By default, it's going to be in the vCard format, but you can also choose to get it in CSV. So depending on what you like, if that suits better for what you might be uh, potentially migrating to, or if you're using this for data liberation or whatever, uh, you might choose CSV. So I'm gonna actually choose a non-standard option of CSV. And now within contacts, it's going to give me my Google contacts in CSV format instead of uh, VCF. A really, really big one is Google Drive. That's going to contain a lot of data for a lot of people who are interested in using this tool. So I'm going to firstly manually select uh, Google Drive, then we'll take a little look at, at what the options are. So by default, the option is to basically take everything from your Google Drive. Um, but if you, you can actually select just the folders you want. So like by default, it's include all files and folders in the drive. So I can turn that off and then I can actually just manually specify, uh, this is what I'm going to want, right? You can see sort of some of the outline of my Google drive. I have a shared folder with my wife that I might say, okay, I'm not going to need that. I don't need content, content marketing, uh, the stuff archive to S3 is stuff I'm definitely don't need. That's like stuff I've already archived. So etc. So you can be uh, granular here up to only the first level of your folder. So the way I've organized my Google Drive whereby my Google Drive starts on the first level of the folder, and that actually kind of prevents me from being able to control it more granularly, granularly in the export process because there's no way that I can specify which subfolders I want. You can uh, then click on to which formats you want and you'll be able to choose if you wish um, which format for certain Google Drive data. So let's say all the documents, all the GDocs, it's going to um, flip those over to docx, but you can say, uh, I prefer PDF, and this will change it so that everything, all the documents are bundled up as PDFs, uh, drawings, PDF forms, Jamboard, presentations, PPTX, or PDF. Spreadsheets can be exported as XL, XLX, XLSX, or PDF, um, so that's an option you can play around with as well. Finally, for the Google Drive product, there is an advanced settings operator, and using this, <coughs> you can include some uh, non-standard data, like the names, published and uploaded versions, um, so that if you want to get more data, you can, you can include that, and you can include additional info for files and folders. I don't really know what that is, uh, but th those are some of the options you can do in your Google product, a Google Drive uh, product. If you are a Google Fit user, you've got a bit of options here. You can include all your Fit data, or you can remove certain uh, certain types of the data that um, aren't necessarily so useful for you. If you are a business owner and you're using GMB, Google My Business to maintain a listing, you have some options as to how you can pull out the data here. 
Um, by default, actually, you don't really have some options. Uh, so this is just one of those things where instead of giving you options, the, the tool's a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes it gives you options. Other times it just says, this is what you're getting. This is one of the, this is what you're getting, uh, Google products. So it's going to tell you, it's going to give you, uh, your info, your posts, your reviews and replies all in JSON. So that is basically what you get. Perhaps in the future, they're going to give you some options to pull out the GMB data in a different format. Google Photos, I would suggest, is going to be another kind of heavy hitter for people in terms of their Google footprint. And you have options here between format and the albums that you include. So within the albums, as you can see, you can uh, it'll li literally list out all the different albums you have and you're able to uh, select or deselect individually which albums to include in the export under Google Photos. If you are a Google Podcast user, and just remember that you can also run the export uh, for one product at a time. So like if you just wanted to get your Google Podcast subscriptions, I don't know if you can directly export your subscriptions in OPML format from the product itself. But if you can't, you can just click on Google Podcasts and you'll be getting the, uh, again, there's no real options here, but it's just telling you that you'll get your subscriptions in the format of OP OPML which is interoperable usually with other podcatching apps if you want to maintain your subscriptions to the same shows. Uh, this is uh, one way that makes it pretty easy to do it. So Gmail is very important uh, for most people. Again, you're gonna see most of your data in just a few services. So there is options here under Google Mail. You have formats and you can include which mail data to include or not. So by clicking on the mail data to include, you can see that I have my Gmail, the first number of my Gmail labels are populating here. So by default, you're gonna get everything in your inbox. But if you just want to back up the mail in specific folders or labels, you can select them this way and they'll be uh, dumped out to you in inbox format, uh, which as far as I can remember, includes the attachments as well somehow. Under mail formats, you can see, as I mentioned, inbox is the standard format for storing email messages. And you've also got your user settings. They're given out to you in the format of JSON. Google Maps, another Google product that a lot of people are going to be committing data into. You have, by default, all maps data included. Um, but you're able to g drill down into it and just get your like specific types of things you've, you've uploaded to Google Maps. And in the formats, you're going to be getting stuff as uh, JSON. Um, for basically pretty much most things. There's a couple of things in XML and maps your places. So your reviews in Google, again, this is something I would suggest is uh, quite important. If you've left a lot of reviews for Google, for your places in Google Maps, uh, you can scoop up that data by using this one. Multiple formats are going to get your reviews, uh, reviews with or without text left for a place. And it's going to be in geo in the geo JSON format. Uh, which as far as I know is JSON, but it's got the geo tag for the place you reviewed um, in there as well. Um, Google My Maps is a product that I think they are sort of sunsetting or it's not so popular, but if you've used it, you can uh, take that up and you can choose, you're gonna get the KMZ format for your uh, thing. So getting onto kind of like smaller products here, um, news data about the magazines you're interested in, they put that out as TXT. Um, and I think that is kind of like the most important services. Oh, except for YouTube, the very last one on the list. So again, remember the point I made that this is going to be for your Google account and not the brand accounts. So let's say I tick into YouTube and I'm just going to show you guys what options we have within the YouTube data. Okay. So this is your YouTube, uh, select selection options by default. You're going to take it all out but you can choose to deselect. So just remember, this is for the person account. So videos, um, so some of these are really important, I would suggest. Um, one of them would be your YouTube subscriptions, who you subscribe to on YouTube. The big one from a data standpoint, the heaviest data here would be your videos. So if you are backing up your YouTube videos, um, which I would recommend backing them up before you put them on the cloud, you can save quite a potentially lots of gigabytes of data by deselecting videos if you don't need those in your in your takeout. Um, and then of course, if you wanna just run this individually, you wanna back up your Google playlist, it's a really clunky way. 
selecting nothing, going into Google, uh, going into YouTube, deselecting everything and just selecting playlists. But that would be one way to just grab your playlist. Um, so that's basically it. That was what I wanted to cover in this video is the different uh, components of the Google Takeout. Once you've made your selections, um, it's pretty straightforward. You go to next step, choose whether you want your data in a zip format for the archives or tar.gz if you're on a Linux machine. And you can also specify the maximum uh, volume size. So for instance, uh, if you are using the M disk for backup, your 25 GB M disks, uh, you can select the max data size to 10 gigs. So you can get, you can fill up 25 gig disks in 10 GB slices, um, however many that requires. Or if you want to just uh, do it, have the biggest uh, zips possible. If you change out of zip into tar GZ, you can select 50 gigs. Uh, so 50 gig uh, tar balls as the export. Hope that was helpful to help people understand Google Takeout a little bit better. It is a good service. It does have its place, but it, there are some important limitations to know about from a data standpoint. So thanks for watching. Until the next video.